Hello? Hello? Hey, uh, hey and welcome everyone. It's so nice to see so many of you here, especially after yesterday. Uh, and welcome at the Unity Test Tools session. Uh, my name is Tomek. Uh, I'm, I'm a part of the Toolsmiths team at Unity. Uh, my team deals with uh, internal tools, mostly related to test automation. Um, unfortunately, my colleague Dima uh, couldn't make it, uh, but don't worry, I'll try to cover his part, uh, which will be a live demo of the test tools. But um, before I start the presentation, uh, I would really love to get to know you a little bit uh, better. Um, so if you don't mind, please raise your hand uh, if you have heard about the test tools before. Oh, that's impressive. Uh, who, have, who of you have used the test tools? That's also very impressive. Um, who of you is dealing with test automation as a daily job? Great. Uh, and any leads or project managers here that try to uh, find extra work for their team? <laughs> <laughs> Great. And. Uh, who is you is doing like regular development uh, and wants to uh, gain new skills in test automation. And this is great because I think uh, test automation is mainly for guys like you, um, but I'll get, to back, I'll get back to that a bit later. Um, so I like to start this presentation with a little poem. I found it on the internet. I don't know who's the author. But it goes like that, um, 99 little bugs in the code, 99 little bugs in the code. Take one down, patch it around, 117 little bugs in the code. Uh, I think it's a cute little poem. Uh, and uh, I think it depicts the problem of, uh, the, the main purpose of test automation very well, uh, which is uh, finding, test, uh, finding regressions in your code. Um, test automation uh, is perfect for, uh, sorry, regressions are, if you don't know what regressions are, regressions are newly introduced bugs in the code, in the code base, uh, bugs that were not there before that are new and uh, that probably should be fixed. And test automation, the purpose of test automation is to find those regressions. Um, Another thing that test automation uh, brings to you is code quality. It improves the code quality. Uh, if you write test, if you write code that has to be uh, out uh, tested, it's, it, it kind of enforces you to make the code modularized and isolated, which in general improves the quality of the code. Uh, for me personally, another thing, another important thing is the something I call quality contract. A, it's a contract between uh, me and my members of my team, or maybe uh, members of other teams in uh, in my company, where uh, if I write code and I uh, properly uh, test it with uh, automated tests, and other people pick it up in order to change the code they can be sure that the changes they introduce, they will not break anything important in the code because they can run, this, uh, run those tests really fast and uh, sleep well in the night. This is also important for me if I pick up my code, my own code, even my own code after like, let's say a couple of months, I don't remember what uh, I was trying to uh, achieve with certain parts of the code. And uh, with the tests, I'm sure that uh, I have certain degree that I'm sure until like a certain point that I didn't break anything and uh, I can sleep better with, uh, thanks to that. There is um, yet another one, uh, a bit more pragmatic reason for test automation. Um, this graph presents uh, it's not real data, but you, you get the overview. Uh, it's based on empirical data gathered by researchers among different universities. And it presents the costs of introducing changes in the code base. And uh, fixing a bug is introducing a change in the code. And the, code, the, the cost of introducing such change raises 
uh, really fast in uh, later stages of development. Uh, we're in production. We're in production where the code, where the product is already out there. Your customers are using it, and if you want to change the, the code that is already in production, the costs are really, really high compared to, for instance, earlier stages. Uh, like you say, QA as a stage after development, it is uh, not necessarily like it doesn't work like that uh, necessarily. Usually you try to do QA while you're, while you're developing, but this is mostly the uh, acceptance testing QA, where the product is uh, almost done. Uh, but still, when you ship the product, the costs can be really high, and most of them are not uh, visible at the first uh, glance because they involve many people in between and um, hidden costs like uh, actually shipping and uh, updating the products on the client sites. Um, so if we have the automated tests, we can run them very often and uh, we can run them with very low cost, relatively low cost. So uh, that's, a, that's, that's a thing we should do as early as possible. Um, and uh, that's why we should aim to uh, write those tests as soon as possible. Um, but we're talking about um, games here. So a few years ago, when I was talking with people and asking them what do they think about test automation for games, how do they deal with it, many people said that uh, they just simply don't know how to do it or some of them even said that they, uh, they, you should not uh, write test automations for games because it's, they said because it's games, you don't do that. And that is, uh, I found it a bit weird. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't think it's easy to write test automation for games, but it uh, doesn't mean it's not feasible. And I agree, it's, it's a difficult task, but it's still not impossible. Um, game, games are kind of specific software, kind of um, complicated software because they touch many different aspects like graphics, rendering, like audio networking. They need to keep up with certain performance level, um, which makes everything hard, harder, but not impossible because it's still software. It's still the same software that uh, the, the same code that you would write uh, in other kinds of programs. In um, test automation, there is this concept of um, automation pyramid. It was introduced by Mike Kohn uh, in one of his uh, books. And it uh, presents the effective test strategy you should follow uh, in your in your suits, uh, it basically tells you that you should base your test suits on unit tests, which are the lowest level tests. Uh, on top of that, you should build a set of integration tests, which will not be uh, that big in the number. And then you should also, or you, you could also have uh, part of a, a small suit of UI tests, which is not necessary, which um, will uh, cover the broadest codes in the paths, in, in broadest paths in the code. But uh, the problem with uh, UI tests is that they are very hard to maintain. And uh, that's why you should not focus on them in the first place. You should have a solid ground of unit tests because unit tests are uh, the most scalable tests, are the fastest to run. And once you have that, you should build more higher level tests on top of this suit. Um, because the higher you get in this pyramid, uh, the, you gain less scalability, but uh, you, might, you, might be, it might, you might feel it's easier to build UI tests because they are, easy, they are the easiest to alter, they are the easiest to write, because they don't require testability from your code that much as, uh, for instance, if you compare them to unit tests. Mm, by UI tests, I mean usually um, you would imitate user input, which is uh, which I feel like many many of uh, the people I talk with 
even here at this conference, uh, tends to do or want to do, because it's, it feels easy, it feels natural that you want to imitate uh, the, how the user would interact with, the, with your product. But there are, uh, there are some, uh, there could be some issues with such tests, because UI tests are very prone to changes. It's very easy to break them, and it's very easy. It's, it will lead you to um, fixing the test constantly, because whenever a small change has been, is introduced to the UI, you usually need to fix those tests. And that is not a good thing to do because it will discourage you from tests. At some point, there is um, always this point in the development, especially when you write tests, where you start thinking that you're wasting too much time on uh, maintaining the tests. And uh, that, that is a dangerous thing because it can discourage you or even worse, your whole team, uh, which you should really try to avoid. That's why we encourage you to write tests, um, to write testable code, and start with writing low-level tests, um, and then on top of that, build other higher-level tests. Uh, the Unity Test Tools package, as you probably know, because so many of you heard about it, um, it's an asset store package at the moment, and cons it consists of three main components. Uh, the first one is the Unity Test Runner, uh, for writing low-level tests. The other one is uh, called Integration Test Runner, which is uh, used for writing so-called scene-based tests. And the third, uh, third part is Assertion Component, which is a component for uh, setting up assertions in a, in a visual fashion. Uh, I'll show you those tools uh, a bit later how they work in practice. Mm, yeah, and that's a picture of the unit test runner. Um, uh, the unit, we try to, um, currently we're working on integration of the test tools, and uh, good news is that the unit test runner is gonna be integrated in Unity 5.3. It's, it's not gonna be called unit test runner anymore. Um, we decided to rename it to editor test runner and the reason for that is, um, although it's a unit test runner and allows you to write unit tests, but uh, it, it allows you also to write any other kinds of tests. And unit tests uh, need to have certain properties in order to be called unit tests. You cannot just write a test in a unit test framework and call it a unit test because um, not every test you write in there will be a unit test. Um, unit tests uh, need to be uh, uh, low level, as as the as the name suggests. It tests a unit of work um, or a single logical concept. It has to be fully automated. It does. It can't require any user interaction. Uh, they need to test code in isolation. Usually, you would uh, test one module of your code and mock all the other modules it depends on. They have to be fast. They need to run uh, very fast. Some people like to see unit tests as a part, running unit tests as a part of the compilation process, uh, which uh, kind of enforces them to be fast. And fast is a matter of milliseconds. Maybe for some people it will be seconds if their builds take very long time. And uh, they have to be consistent. They have to give you the same results on every platform you run them on. Uh, they cannot depend on external resources like network or um, disk operations because one thing is that it will slow them down. The other thing is that if the network, for instance, connection is broken, they will, they will fail, but they will fail not because your code is broken, but they will fail because the external dependency is broken. And you should avoid that. Well, therefore, we call, them, we call them editor tests because uh, you run those tests in the editor, not in the play mode. Um, as the integration tests I mentioned before, uh, you write sort of scene-based tests 
with them where uh, they would be run in play mode and you would test your assets or scripts that uh, depend on time. And uh, the assertion component, but I think it's gonna be better if I uh, explain you the details in the live demo later. Um, all those tests you can write in both unit test runner, integration test runner can be run in batch mode. Uh, this is a, an example of um, how you would write it on Windows, how you, how you, how you would run it on Windows. Uh, such run will generate a result file that you can, pro um, you can analyze and figure out what tests have failed. So it's very easy to integrate it with your CI systems. And the result file is in an unit format, which uh, probably all, uh, most, if not all, of the CI systems out, out there have plugins for to, to parse those files. Um, so Unity test tools, they are available on the Asset Store, as you probably know. The source code for them is hosted on uh, Beatbucket, or GitHub, it was Beatbucket, uh, where we do, where we also take bug reports, uh, and uh, if, you're, uh, if you like to uh, contribute to the project, we can also create a pull request uh, through Bitbucket. Uh, there is also uh, a thread on Unity forums where people ask questions rela uh, related to the test tools and try to help each other. I'm also uh, following this thread. So, um, if you have any questions, you should write it there. Um, one thing that got introduced in Unity 5.1 is the assertion library. It's, uh, it's a library that simply does what, uh, what is available in most of the languages out there. It, it, it provides you a way to assert your code. Um, it exposes methods that simply, the, that simply will uh, assert if the condition you provide there is true, and if it fails, it will uh, log a assertion, assertion log message. The benefit you get from that is that you, you don't need to throw exceptions, and uh, this library is fully integrated with our uh, logging system. Uh, which makes it work on all the platforms out there because some, some platforms, for instance, don't support exceptions. Uh, it's available under Unity Engine.assertions namespace. And there is also the must extension library, which is a wrapper for the, for the main uh, assertion library, but it's uh, crossed over because we uh, decided to. Uh, deprecated, so if you have been using it, sorry about that, but uh, just switch to the other one. We just don't decided it's going to be better if we don't have to maintain two different uh, APIs that do exactly the same. Um, and those assertions, they will, of course, be compiled out from final builds, like you would expect. The conditional compilation is controlled by, the, by Unity assertions, um, Define in the in the code. You can use it for other uh, debugging-related codes you want to compile out. Um, and this is how it looks like. This is an example. You simply. Uh, uh, and by the way, this is a tool that uh, probably developers would want to use. Uh, it's not something you should uh, control your tests with. It's more for runtime checks. That uh, it's more for guarding your code. If you're a developer, you should uh, try writing, adding those assertions to your code, in order to find issues uh, as soon as possible. Um, from other things that can be useful for testing or test automation, is a uh, oh. My colleague Marek Turski is working currently on a model-based testing framework that bases on the integration test runner. Uh, I'm not gonna go into details what is uh, model-based testing about, but briefly saying it's, uh, it's a way of generating tests from a model of your code. You create the model and you uh, 
put on some restrictions and the, the framework will generate the tests run for you. Uh, I think it's a super nice way of uh, testing your code, especially if you know how to generate a model from it. Um, it's still in development. There is no, um, there is no, um, we don't know when it's going to be ready, but if any of you is interested in uh, trying the alpha versions, uh, feel free to reach me out. There is another framework called Strange IOC, and the Strange Inversion of Control, which was written by um, two guys that currently work at Unity, uh, but they wrote, they wrote it uh, before they joined the company. Um, and it's an inversion of control system for resolving dependencies, which, uh, uh, which is great for when you have a modularized code. There is another new framework. I haven't had much time to try it out, but it's been introduced on a couple of months back in, in Amsterdam on the, the previous Unite. It's called Entitas, and it's um, an entity component system. Uh, as I said, I haven't had time to try it out, but uh, it also uh, it can be used to work with modularized code. So, uh, I'm, I'm sure it's worth uh, checking out. And uh, if you are doing test automation extensively and you wish to uh, contribute to the test tools, or we, we basically create the tools for you, and uh, in order to make them as you, uh, in order to make them as m the mo most usable. You should, uh, we rely on your feedback. So if you use the test tools extensively and you want to contribute, please uh, send us your feedback uh, as much as you can because otherwise uh, we, we might not take the right path in order to uh, satisfy your needs. Uh, and now I'm going to show you uh, the test tools, how they work in, in Unity. So let's start with the integration tests. I'm going to quickly show you an example that we ship with the test tools. This is a scene. Um, you can see here, those are, those are assets from the, uh, from the Angry Bots project. I simply took the prefabs of the player and the bot one of the enemies you're fighting with, and I put them on this artificial scene, our, our, the artificial test setup where uh, I want to test if the bot will wake up and start, it will start walking towards the player whenever the player comes uh, close enough. Um, so let's see what happens when I run it. Uh, what happened was that the bot woke up and started walking towards the player, and the moment it hit the uh, green cube, the test finished and the test uh, passed. Um, this cube, it has a script that calls an API that tells the test runner that uh, the test has succeeded. In integration tests, you need to explicitly tell the test runner that the test has either passed or failed. Um, and if you think about unit tests, uh, if you have a simply an empty method, and if you run a unit test that does nothing, it will automatically succeed the test. Uh, but it's possible for unit tests because you have uh, explicitly um, you have the entry and exit point, exit point uh, bounded by the, uh, by the test method, while in the integration tests, there is no, and, uh, there is no clear endpoint because the, the tests run in, uh, in play mode and you, you, uh, you have to somehow tell the test runner that the test is considered successful. If you don't do anything, the test will simply time out. Uh, So let's try to create a test, a test from scratch.
So I have the integration test window open here. If I click the Create button, a new game object is put on the scene. And this is, uh, this is simply a game object with a test component script. Uh, if you look at the test component script, uh, you can customize it. Uh, but I'll walk you through that in a second. Let's try to put a prefab I want to test. I have this plane. I have this plane I will put under the, the test game object in the hierarchy. It's actually a 2D prefab. And I will call the test plane um, goes down. So this prefab this prefab is from a simple game that is kind of like a Flappy Bird game where you control the plane and you need to avoid uh, mines and collect coins, which I'll, I will show you later. Uh, but basically the plane will, if there is no user interaction, uh, the plane will go down. And uh, let's say we want to test that. It's a very simple test, but uh, let's try to write, um, let's try to create such test. So if I, if I hit play now, if I run this test, uh, because there is no, uh, because I didn't tell the test runner uh, what is the condition for passing the test, it's simply timed out. So let's try to create a, uh, a, a uh, let's try to put this cube that on collision will pass the test. There are multiple ways of, of controlling the test flow. The most basic one is, as, as I told you, uh, invoking an API that you would simply call integration tests.pass. Uh, we provide a script for, that does exactly that for you. Um, so let's try to put a cube. Let's place it under the plane. And the script is called call testing. Here you simply select the callback uh, on which you want the, um, the script to call the pass or fail method. And in this case, we need the collision, let's say on collision, enter 2D. And we want the script to call pass. So if we run the tests now, it went straight through. Because the collider is not a 2D collider. So no collision happened. But let's see if it works now. Yep. So let's take a look at this uh, little script. It's simply what it does in the selected callback is trying to call either the integration test.pass or integration test.fail method. And that's, that's all what you need to do. Um, and you can either write your own script and attach it anywhere in the test. Uh, and do all the test logic and then um, either succeed or fail the test. Or you can use one of those uh, scripts we provide. Um, another way of uh, controlling the test execution or the test flow is uh, by the assertion component. Uh, if you check the... So let me, let me introduce you to the assertion component first. I will remove this script or disable it for now. I'll create an empty game object and I will add the assertion component to it. Uh, the assertion component is um, a component you, you could use for setting up assertions uh, in your code visually. So the idea is not to uh, use the code, not to write any code, just simply select everything from uh, in the component. The first thing you want to pick is the comparer. 
And the compare is a class that defines the way to compare the objects with each other. Uh, in this case, we want to try, we want to, uh, we want to assert against a position in the world, which is a float variable. Uh, so I'll select the float compare. And the next thing is the, you want to pick is the callback you want to, uh, you want to, you want the comparison to happen. And uh, you can either check it in one of those callbacks or you can check it after a certain period of time or number of frames. So let's say I want to uh, check it after one second. So I selected the after period of time and by default it says one second. I don't need to repeat uh, the checks. And I will drag the plain prefab instance uh, on the field here. And from this dropdown, I'll be able to select uh, my property of this game object. I will look for transform position Y component. Uh, a cool thing about that is the, the comparers, they can be either generic or type specific. If they're type specific, this uh, drop down here will filter out all the properties that do not fit, do not match with the type that the comparer takes. Uh, so we have selected the transform position Y and we say it wa we want it to be uh, less than currently it's zero. So we want, to, we want it to be less than, uh, let's say, zero or minus one, just to be sure. Um, sorry, this is the floating, floating point error. Uh, but we can either compare it with another property of another game object that we would select uh, the similar way as here, or we can compare it to a constant value, and let's say minus one. Um, and it's gonna be checked after one second uh, so if I run the test now, I'll need to select the succeed on assertions checkbox and I can remove this already. If I run it now, after one second, uh, the assertion will uh, check if the position of the plane is below minus one, uh, which can indicate that it actually went, uh, went down. And the way the, this option works is that it will check for assertions attached to all the game objects under this specific test. And if they are checked at least once uh, and none of them failed, obviously, it will succeed the test automatically. Uh, the test component has also other options like expect exceptions that allows you to specify uh, types of exceptions that are expected by the test runner that should not fail the test. Uh, because obviously if an exception is thrown uh, while the test is running, the, it will fail the test. You can also, you can also uh, control the test execution with exceptions. Uh, you can select the succeed when exception is thrown checkbox, which, is, which will basically succeed the test. If we take a look uh, at the assertion, at the compare, because uh, another cool thing about the comp assertion component is that's very easily extensible. If we uh, Look at the code of the float compare. You can see it's simply a, a class inherit in, that inherits from a base class. And the only thing you need to do is to uh, implement the compare method. As I mentioned before, it can either be a generic method or non-generic. And when it's generic, you will get the type-specific um, parameters here. Otherwise, you'll get objects and you will need to uh, handle them uh, as, as uh, C-sharp objects. The compare, all the fields you, you see here, the public fields, they will be exposed 
in the inspector. Uh, you can see them here. So it allows you to write, allows you to expose a way to configure the compare the way you, uh, the way you want. All right, let me show you one more example. For instance, this test, it checks the opposite. It checks if the player, if the plane goes up whenever user presses the, uh, a button that uh, is responsible for moving the plane up. And that shows you a way to how to, how to possibly mock the user input, because I know many people, uh, many of you ask for that. It's also using the assertion component to check that, um, to check the test, tested condition. And there's another game object with a script, and uh, this script is simply setting uh, the player controller into a state that imitates uh, the same state you would achieve with, by pressing a button that uh, is supposed to fly the plane up. Um, so this is achieved with uh, creating this sort of middle uh, layer of abstraction between user input and uh, the actual controller, uh, which allows you to mock user input. It's uh, probably there is no universal way of doing that. It really depends on how you handle the input yourself. Uh, but in this case, uh, I can show you that it's simply setting the state of the player controller uh, from the script. Otherwise, this state is set from a user input uh, controller, and, uh, and that's one way of, of achieving, uh, of mocking user input. The integration test runner, uh, there's also this uh, module, let's say, called Platform Runner. It allows you to run all those tests on the platforms. Um, it will build the test scene for you. It will execute it on your platform, and it will get the results back to the, to the editor. Let's try to run this uh, test we have right now, the test suit. This, uh, you can select uh, the scene you want to build in the platform, and simply you click Build and Run Tests. And you'll get a notification if all the tests have succeeded, as well as you can see it here. It also uh, runs from batch mode. So uh, you can also run the integration tests on the platforms in your CI system. From other tools, there is the Assertion Explorer that simply lists all the assertions that are available uh, in the game objects on the scene. Um, it's just for you so you can get an overview of uh, all the assertions. Uh, the integration tests, they can also be written from, uh, purely from code. You simply create a mono behavior and you add uh, certain attributes. It's, uh, it's very simple. You just add this dynamic test attribute on the, to the mono behavior derived class and you need to provide the name of the test, or the name of the scene uh, you want this test to be created on. And this uh, test will simply be pick, picked up by the test runner. I think they are here, yes. This, this is the test that is created 
dynamically and it's purely written in, uh, in script. So it's for people that rather prefer to maintain their tests fully from code uh, rather than uh, visually. And you can set all the parameters uh, of the test component from um, other attributes. So I think that's about it when it goes about, uh, when it goes about integration tests. Um, I can quickly show you the unit test runner, but it's uh, nothing uh, more than you would expect from uh, any other uh, unit test runner in any other IDE. However, the advantage of this, uh, of uh, the unit test runner uh, in the editor is that you can invoke Unity API certain Unity APIs that uh, are not possible to invoke from, uh, for instance, uh, MonoDevelop or Visual Studio test runner. Uh, and that's because there's the bindings between the managed layer and the na native layer don't exist outside of the editor. So, for instance, if you try to instantiate a game object within a test uh, and you would run such tests outside of uh, the editor, it would simply throw an exception uh, that the, uh, the bindings are not, uh, do not exist. Um, but it's possible from this runner, so uh, that's why we created this uh, GUI for it. And, uh, and this test runner is simply an unit integration, uh, the latest version for Two for two point four point six, or maybe I'm wrong. Um, but it's also possible to write to run it in uh, in batch mode, and uh, you will get the results in an XML file. And it's uh, and it's uh, supporting most of the end unit functionality. Uh, some uh, attributes like random uh, attributes, uh, I think they are not supported yet, but most of the other functionality is. So uh, I, I think that's about it, uh, because I would like to leave some time for questions. Uh, but before I finish, uh, that's the contact information to me. If you guys uh, ever have any questions or uh, want to reach me out, uh, feel free to uh, shoot me an email or tweet to me. I'm also on the forum. Um, so yes, uh, thanks for the uh, for attending, and uh, I guess I guess I can take questions now. I think you need to line up to those microphones uh, if you have any questions. Thank you. No questions? Oh, no, okay. <laughs> uh, specifically about the whole being able to run tests outside of Unity, yes. is there any way around that security exception at all? Um, I mean, is there an idea on your side that eventually is going to basically decouple that? Um, yes, we were, we were looking into this problem. Uh, I even tried to write an NUnit plugin that would simply reach the editor out and run the tests there and get the results back and just feed the results to the IDE. But I think um, the problem I had, for instance, in Visual Studio with the uh, ReSharper runner, which is, I think, the most common unit test runner, is that they were using the, the plugin they were using was, uh, I think, using the callback that I was required and I couldn't hook into this callback. But uh, it's something we will, uh, I will try to improve because I know it's much easier to run those tests from, 90, from the ID, but without running it in the editor, 
it won't be possible to. Uh, yeah, we, we even attempted the whole unconstrained like um, thing where you can, uh, instead of just you know mocking out uh, interfaces, you can just mock out whatever the heck you want. I can't remember the right terminology, mm -hmm. but where you can even go down, you know, down to the lower level and say, oh, I don't want this DLL to be called, and it just wouldn't play nice with whatever you guys are doing inside. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you could make that happen, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I'll do my best. No more questions? Are there any plans to make Unity test tools that run on device? Uh, do you mean the integration tests or? The, sure, any kind of UI test on device with some kind of official Unity test tool? But what do you mean by Unity sense? test tools? Like, uh, it, any, any plans to make Unity test tools that will run an automated test on a client device? Like, on an iPad, on an iPhone? Well, you can run the integration tests on, the, on, a, on a device. Okay. Uh, you can build it to the, for the specific platform and run on, on the device you wish. So with these kind of tests, uh, if you flub it and uh, there is no failure condition or the test doesn't succeed, is there any kind of safeguard to make sure that your automated batch suite just doesn't hang forever? Um, there is, unless something goes really wrong, the test will time out uh, after a certain uh, amount of time. By default, I think it's five seconds. Um, so hopefully it will not hang forever. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, I was just wondering if there's any best practices for organizing these tests. Uh, it seems like it's, it could very easily get quite messy. <laughs> um, so. For unit tests, you can use categories. Uh, it's an unit functionality. And uh, if you simply add one category, you will get uh, a drop-down box where you can filter the tests by categories. Uh, for integration tests, uh, you, would, you would want to see uh, one scene as a test suit uh, with, I guess, um, like tests that would test similar, cons uh, similar areas. Uh, I had a plan to introduce uh, uh, categories to the integration tests. I just didn't do it yet. Um, but I also hope for the, the functionality of multi-scene editing. When it goes in, it will allow us or allow you to use the integration tests on the production scenes without having at the same time all the tests uh, in the production scene. It will be a separate scene, but you will still be able to, to run it. So with that, uh, with that functionality, uh, I think it will be much easier to maintain those. Uh, Suits. So um, um, like I, there is some feel for improvement for integration tests, but I'm waiting for features that are not out uh, yet uh, because I prefer to have it done properly rather than hack around and, uh, and create, uh, create some assumptions that uh, we'll have to learn before I actually start using the tools. I want uh, um, the experience to be as seamless as possible. Um, but yes. Uh, one scene, it's a uh, one suit. <laughs> cool, thank you. Hi, uh, you mentioned that uh, you wouldn't recommend doing unit tests for anything that was requiring data over a network, mm -hmm. uh, but are there any unity tests that could do any type of network data validation? Um, you can do that with integration tests. Um, and what I said is that, like, I'm not saying you should not do that, uh, but I'm, I'm not recommending you to, the, to do that. I, you should know what are the, um, what, can, what can happen when you write such tests. Probably you would not want to run those tests in uh, your CI system because uh, you uh, very easily they can break because of the network connection and you will just lose time on trying to figure out why they broke, why something didn't work. Uh, such tests can be fine if you do test passes once in a while, for instance. Like you can try to write semi-automated tests where you 
set the environment yourself and you have like fully control over the test run and you, you know uh, you're monitoring them while they run and that is totally fine but if you want to write tests uh, and uh, that that everyone would benefit like all the developers that would uh, try to f f for instance find regressions you would want to avoid uh, external dependencies uh, because uh, like you need to make sure other people will be able to run it as well, and who knows, maybe they won't have, uh, they won't be able to connect where, to the, let's say, database or uh, um, whatever you, where you will want to connect from the test. Um, but it's not, uh, it's not something that you should never do. You should just be aware of the consequences of that. Thanks. Um, anyone? Any more questions? No. Okay, thank you very much again, and uh, thank you. And uh, I wish you a safe trip home from the conference.